be in the house. Yeah. Yes. It's been a long time, man. Just yes. My yes. apologies, I couldn't make it when I heard um, Pastor Pass. I was in between projects. Um, when First Lady passed, I think I was out of the country. And then when Pastor passed, I was also on travel for work. So that's why I couldn't be here. But it really did really grieve my heart when I heard it. Yes. Um, sometimes some of these things happen and we can't quite understand why. But I'm glad that God is beginning to give the church some insight on why some of these things happen and why they shouldn't. What I'll tell you in my personal prayer is when you look at the scripture, all the fathers of faith, none of them went without knowing. And my personal prayer is God, if my time comes up, I need to know. Abraham called Isaac and he said, It's time for me to go. And all he did was he just lay down and he left. Isaac did the same thing. Jacob did the same thing. Paul did the same thing. None of the apostles died without knowing. None of them. So nothing happens by accident. And as a child of God, you should know because he is your father. I have two daughters. Until I die, if I'm going somewhere, even at this age, they want to know where I'm going. Amen. And whenever they grow up, if they have to leave the house, they'll probably have to tell me where they're going. That's right. So if us, as um, not fully known, as sinful, we can do some of those things for our children. What more for our heavenly Father? Amen. So I want to encourage you. It's been a while that yes. I've had glow in my mind. Yes, sir. Oh, yes. I've had glow in my mind. Yes. And my prayer, and I keep talking with Brother Bostrom today. Yes. There's some things as I was sitting there that I keep, I think the Spirit began stirring in me. My prayer is someday when I come back, this youth will be full. Not because we just want it to be full, but because the word that will come out of here will force people to come to listen. There is something about the word of God. We all know it says it is an incorruptible seed. If we all know what seed is, the ground is no respecter of persons. Even if you throw a seed and you didn't properly plant it, that ground will cause that seed to do something. Either it will remain dormant or it will begin to grow. Yes. The word of God is an incorruptible seed. When you speak it to these kids, I see them now, he's a big man now. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Now yeah. over the music ministry. Yeah. Have to see them. Amen. Even when you think they're not listening, yeah. Yeah. it is an incorruptible yeah. seed. Oh, and it will bring forth its fruit oh, when it is due. Oh, it never dies. Yeah. Yeah. Just as the rains come on. falls uh, that's right. and doesn't return void, but it begins to come back up as a vapor. Every word they hear, there will come a time. That word will spring up. Yes. Never lose sight as parents when they're seeing and hearing the word of God. Amen. If there is a better place to hear something that has long-term effect, it is the word of God. Amen. Paul said this to Timothy. He said, from a child, you have known the word. Not necessarily because he was being taught, but because he was seeing yes, and listening to the word. Yes. And Paul says, you have known the word. My God. Because every time the word goes out, it is a seed. My God. My God. Some will fall on the, on the wrong way, yes. and some will fall on the good ground. Even the ones that fell on falling soil, uh -huh. 
the seed remain can remain dormant for a long time. Even natural seeds, some seeds can remain dormant for a long time. They need the right conditions to make them to begin to germinate. And I'll study in biology. We told three factors that is required for every seed to light, water, and air. Same goes for the word of God. It can remain dormant. There will come a time when all of a sudden water is poured into that seed yes. through the precious Holy Spirit. Yes. And something begins to create, cause them to germinate. So don't give up. And I want to encourage you. I like what you did at school. Keep staying a friend with that young man. Okay? Yes, yes, yes. Don't give up on him. Love him. Encourage him. Yes. And even if the people who are picking at him are stronger than you, stand up for him. Oh, man. Yes, sir. Don't be afraid. Hallelujah. There is somebody with you who is greater than all. Amen. And he's the creator of the universe. Yes. David was 16 years old when he fought Goliath. That's right. He was 16 years old. My God. There was a king in Israel. He became king when he was seven. Yes. So you're not too small. Yes. That's right. God is with you. Amen. And he will back you up. in this church. See you now. See how much you've grown and what you're doing. Everything you do in the house of God, God is paying attention. My God. In music, every little service, because this is your father's house. Amen. Yes. And if you treat it as your father's house, Come on, yes. he certainly will treat you as his son. Problem with the particle song, we always sometimes pay attention to the one who left. Mm -hmm. But the one who stayed seemed to have had more issues than the one who right. left. Right. Because when the one who left came back, yes. the one who was at home was angry that the father was throwing the party. Mm -hmm. yes. And the father said, You have been here with me all of this while. Yes. And all of this yes. is yours. Yes. Yes. In fact, let's remember that when the other one left. Uh -huh. The Bible tells us that he divided his inheritance to both oh, sons. Oh, yeah. yes, sir. So it's not like he only gave the one who left and squandered it. The one who stayed had the same portion as yeah. the one who left. My God. And he decided for some reason his mind and his heart was not right. And now it was revealed when the other son came back. That's right. Yeah. He was even angry to the point where he did not want to enter the house. He didn't want to go there. That's right. That's right. And sometimes some of us are like that. Yes, yes. But God said, you've always had this. So as long as you're in the house of God, this is your place of refuge. Right. Yes. There is no other name that can save us under this earth but the name of Jesus. The name of Jesus. And if there's one thing I want to continue to encourage a parent is this. Let's look at Hebrews chapter 6. Yes, sir. I'll read from verse 16. Chapter 6? Yes. Hebrews chapter 6. And start from verse 16. When you're there, say amen. I'll be reading from the New Living Translation. It says, Now, when the people, when people take an oath, they call on someone greater than themselves to hold them to it. Yes. And without any question, that oath is binding. God also bound himself with it, so that those who receive the promise could be perfectly sure that he would never change his mind. So God has given both his promise and his oath. These two things are unchangeable because it is impossible for God to lie. 
Therefore, we who have fled to him for refuge can have great confidence as we hold to the hope that lies before us. This hope is a strong and trustworthy anchor for our souls. It leads us through the curtain into God's inner sanctuary. Jesus has already gone in there for us. He has become our eternal high priest in the order of Melchizedek. So you know, God is showing us that you know, we live in a Western world where we don't understand some of, we really don't understand copyright. We know of contracts. You know, most of us will buy cars and we sign a contract and then we break in. It's all right. It, and they, they, they uh, impound the vehicle or, or uh, they possess it. So we really don't know covenant. The covenant is one of the most powerful agreements you can make. God. A covenant can only be broken by death. The closest thing that I can relate to that we know in the world today as covenants is probably the mafia. Unfortunately, it's that kind of a group that seems to eliminate a little bit of what they call it. It's like. Because in the mafia, if you being integrated in, in some, in some level, sometimes you have a kind of feeling that there is blood shed. And you can never leave. Once, you, once you're in it, your entire family is in it, you cannot get out. Only by death. Likewise, that is what God is saying. If we read the account of Abraham, when God appeared to him and began talking to him about how his uh, his 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 exceeding reward in Genesis chapter twelve and all the way to chapter sixteen, there's something interesting that begins to happen there. Abraham is from a society where he understood a little bit what covenant was, and imagine this: he's almost 60, 75 years old. God is telling him that you have a son. And Abraham is like, you know, I've been waiting for this. Maybe one of my servants will be my heir. And God says, you know, this son is going to come from your own lines. Yes. To help others, uh, Abraham, to guarantee Abraham that what he was saying, he would do. God had to make a covenant with Abraham. I got it. Now, in a covenant, I'll give you some, some background on covenant. If two families, in the history of covenant, something like that, in Africa, that's where I come from, two families may want to get in a covenant. Maybe one family was known as um, uh, the boss family, like you said, and the other was the Hayes. But the boss family, they were very good farmers. The Hades were very good warriors. But the farmers knew they used to have trouble with other people, attacking them every time. So they wanted to cut a covenant with the Hades family so the Hades family could protect them. The Hades family were good warriors, they could fight, but they couldn't farm. So, in exchange for that, they would get food from the boss family. So they agreed to go to covenant. When the ceremony day comes, they would have to bring some animals. And what they would do is they would split that animal in half. And they would let the blood flow, almost like a stream. And the two heads of the family will be walking opposite each other on top of the block and pronouncing what they are going to do for the other family. So the Hayes family will be saying, I'm going to be now your protector. Anybody who fights you, fights me. I'm going to be your refuge. Anybody who troubles you, troubles me. And the boss family will be walking off the same. So this day, I'll be your provider. You will never go hungry. As long as I leave, you have provision for food. 
and at the end they would exchange a gift. Maybe the Hayes family may give them a weapon as a sign. And the boss family may give them some food, maybe real nice food, um, a bag of it or something, and they exchange that gift. And then from that day, their name changed. You'll no longer be the boss family or the Hayes family. Now you will be the boss Hayes family. Your name has to change. From that day on, everybody who knows or identifies anybody from any of those family know that if you fight this one, you are at risk. Right. If you trouble this one, you are in trouble. Right. Because it will no longer be one family coming against you, but two. So that's what God did for Abraham. The Bible tells us that he, he asked Abraham to bring some animals, if you read in Genesis 16. And he told Abraham to kill the animals and cut it in half. And as the blood began flowing, the Bible tells us that the lamp began to walk over it and walk back. And when he did that, God began telling Abraham what would happen to his descendants. It was after that that God now changed Abraham's name. His name used to be Abraham. Abraham, right? Yes. Now God had to incorporate his name into his name. And he called it Abraham. I am. And he called his name Abraham. And from that day, he was no longer just Abraham. He was now Abraham. That meant anybody who came against him came against God. So what we just read in in Hebrews, God is saying that when you make an oath, you want to have somebody who is higher than you to guarantee that what you pay you do. So he has made an oath. And he made an oath with himself. Because man could not hold his own end of the bargain. So he decided to make an oath with himself. And so all we can do is become the beneficiaries of the outcome of that covenant. And he says things, and he says things, God cannot lie. Then there is no way this covenant can change. And whatever he has pronounced concerning that covenant, nobody can change it. So what he says about you, each of you, nobody can change it. We sang the song today that victory. The victory is the house. My prayer is that the heavenly Father will begin to open your eyes all over you to begin to understand what it means to be in Christ. We suffer a lot for what we don't know, not what is happening around us. Never in scripture have you heard or would you find God blaming the devil for what happens to us. It has always been because of our lack of understanding or our lack of knowledge. Never has he blamed the devil, never. You will not find one scripture that is saying it's your fault. It has always been in the house for not knowing. And so, my prayer is that God will enable each of you to begin to know what it means to be a child. If I adopt a child today, I will not treat that child no less than the ones I gave birth to. And I'll have to make sure I do that so he or she doesn't feel discriminated. That's right. Yes. Right? That's right. We would want to make sure the same laws or whatever we show the child. Yes. It tells you that you have been adopted into his family. And now he has made you joint heads with Christ. That's right. That's right. That means whatever authority. Oh, no. 
understands and what Jesus had, we now possess. And that's deep. And I pray that you think about it. Because that alone changed your complete view on how you, you walk out your life as a Christian, as a child. You are a child of the supernatural. No evil can come near you. No form of evil. There's a saying we used to say at home that if you make yourself like a banana, then the monkey will eat you. And what that meant is, and that's why here in scripture, the Bible says the devil is roaming around like a lion. He's right. not a lion, he's yes. just doing it like yes. seeking whom he may devour, which means he cannot just devour everybody. My God. You have to become stupid for him to mess with you. So when you come to the place of understanding who you are in Christ, he has no chance. He has no chance. You are a child of God. Yes. A lot of us today, President Barack Obama wants to walk in this door, or if we were to even see any of his children, nobody would carry out the behavior. Nobody would. You would, you would do everything possible not to inflict any harm on that child because you know that probably the entire United States government will become upon you or against you. That's right. That's right. And yet you are a child of someone who is greater right. than the president of the United yes. States. That's right. They will walk with his family while they don't have anything. Amen. So from this day, may God help each and every one of us yes. to see who is with you. Yes. That you have a you have a father who loves you so much that he has assigned angels to be your father. The Bible says the angels of the Lord hearken unto his voice, waiting to receive the command. Every time you speak the word of God, angels are released to carry it out. They are the servants of God. And the Bible says they are what? Are they not ministering spirits unto those unto the heirs? People shall perform. They are ministering spirits unto us. So be encouraged yes. and know that God is with you. Yes. And that as you begin to dwell and meditate on this revelation that I've shared, then we will begin to see change in the house. Hallelujah. And the children of God, you are blessed. Yes. You may not know it, you may not see it, but you are blessed. Thank you, Lord. God called Joseph a successful man, and yet he was in jail. He was a slave and in jail. Okay. And God said, he is a successful man. And the Bible tells us why. It says, for the Lord was with him. With me. That's right. If your success is not based on how much dollar gifts we have. Yeah. If you carry him, Come on, you, him. you yes. are the most successful person. Oh, yeah. May you be encouraged. Yes, sir. And I pray that may God help you to 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 come out. The Bible says children are what arrows in their hands of their parents. And blessed is the man whose quiver is full of them. So my prayer for each one of you youths is that you will go further than where your parents are. Okay. Because your parents are the ones shooting you up. They are, you are, they are like arrows in the hands of your parents. Yes. So you must go further than yes. where they started. Or where they were in. So that's my expectation. And yeah. that is God's expectation that you will go far. So be blessed, be encouraged. And yes. know that God is with you. Yes. Even when it doesn't feel like it, God is with you. Sometimes you don't feel like breathing, but you breathe. That's right. You don't yes. see the air, but you breathe. Amen. Same goes with God being with you. Yeah. Amen. 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 Amen.